All right, guys, welcome back into the Go247 podcast. I'm Glenn West, senior writer here at the site, uh, joined by Dylan Sanders, our contributing writer. Um, we're both back now from LSU's final uh, home win of the season, of the 2022 season. Uh, LSU knocked off UAB 41-10 to to improve to 9-2 and on the season. Uh, it was a cold one. It was a rainy one. Um, and I – believe now about an hour after we got back here uh that i'm finally thawed out and uh a little bit warmer uh let's just put it that way uh it was freezing cold on the press box uh of course it was freezing cold for all of the fans who stayed and and got to watch that game uh you know for all you fourth quarter fanatics out there uh, I praise you. It was not a very fun game to sit down and watch football for four quarters in terms of just the conditions. Um, but LSU put that to rest pretty early. They got they jumped out on UAB pretty early. Um, had a really great nice, a really great performance from Jaden Daniels. Um, but uh, but you know, Dylan, just how are we feeling about this game overall? What were your uh, big takeaways? I guess. Um, I think they hit on pretty much everything that we needed them to hit on. The offense came back with a uh, with a good performance, which is kind of what we needed to see after they struggled against Arkansas. This is a team that you're supposed to be able to beat and supposed to be able to handle, and you do just that. And I'm very glad I mentioned it. This is a this is a good roster. Um, the coaching staff has kind of let them down, in my opinion, this year. But uh, it, with UAB. Um, it is a good roster, so they you do beat a bunch of good, solid veterans. Um, but Jaden Daniels came out and had a uh, Jaden Daniels of old at this point uh, performance. Uh, you know, it was uh, it was not like UAB. He came out, and he threw the ball confidently, and had a bunch of really nice deep balls this game, which was kind of yeah, kind of crazy. You had this was maybe his best game as a passer, just in terms of consistent deep threats yeah no i i would agree i mean um I, I i thought probably coming in the biggest thing that i wanted to see and we talked about it on friday or thursday i think thursday um but the biggest thing i wanted to see was just him find that rhythm again him to get back into you know those performances that we saw against florida against old miss against alabama uh wanted to get you know definitely see him uh you know find that zone again and he looked every bit the the quarterback he was in those three games and and better i thought he was really decisive with his uh with his throws um you know i think the 47 yarder to malik neighbors on that first drive really kind of uh set the tone for the rest of the night i thought he that was a great throw and a great catch from neighbors um they they linked up i think seven times for uh close to 130 yards so uh, it was nice to see those guys get, uh, you know, get that connection going early in the game. And uh, I just thought Jaden, you know, as a passer, was just extremely efficient. Uh, th- completed seventy six percent of his passes, threw for two ninety seven, ran for an additional hundred and eleven on the ground. Um, man, he's so fast. I mean, <laughs> those, some of those some of those runs that he had in this game, uh, you just you, you can't help but just think he's one of the more electric athletes really in the entire country when he's when he's on like that when he's got both you know the the pass and the run uh working this well he's extremely hard to stop and you can absolutely see why you know brian kelly and this uh you know staff really wanted him why they went into the portal to grab him uh he's he's a game changer and uh, i thought he was terrific throughout the entire night um really just making some some good throws consistently pushing the ball downfield um, uh, I think a big stat that uh, I wouldn't say went underrated for this night, but you know, 11 of 13 on third downs, um, I thought was a, a really telling sign of just how uh, aggressive and how consistent this offense was. I think they scored touchdowns on four of their first five possessions, and uh, it was that it was the kind of the fast start that we were hoping to see all season. Uh, I think from an offensive perspective, this was about a a fast start as they've had all year. Uh, there was one game, uh, I think, earlier this year where they might have scored their first five touchdowns on their first five drives. I can't exactly remember what game that was. Um, but they really came out and, and I think set the tone early. And it was nice to see Jaden kind of have a bounce back game like that. Um, just 
I guess offensively, was there any big takeaway uh, outside of Jaden, or or do we want to keep talking about Jaden? What just what were some of your bigger, I guess, bullet points that you 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 thought you wanted to see from the offense? Yeah, Jaden and uh, neighbors. I mean, if we're gonna have. Josh Williams back, but miss Armani Goodman. Ar- 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 Armani Goodwin for a year. I guess we can can talk about the running backs and how John Emery's uh, fumbling issues came back twice in this one, yeah. uh, which is not what you want to see in this type of game. Uh, cost LSU some points. Uh, luckily, it didn't matter. But those are two likely scoring drives killed by uh, John Emery fumbles in UAB territory. And uh, Noah Kane had a bounce back performance. It felt like he could have had seven touchdowns in this one uh, if they really wanted to, wanted to press it. But uh, he had a good, good, strong running game, which is kind of what you want to see. Um, so I guess that's you know important to take away. And uh, if it sounds like Charles Turner might miss a couple games, <clears throat> um, Marlon Martinez I think had a good game at center. And I think the offensive line held up pretty well overall. Yeah, uh, I would say so. It, you know, just a couple of, um, I guess, house planning, house issuing uh, kind of deals in terms of injury. Um, sounds like uh, Charles Turner is going to be out for a little while. Um, Coach Kelly said he's pretty banged up, but um, we'll see. He, he did kind of give a little cheeky grin there at the end of that answer, saying uh, it might, you know, force him to you know, with, with Martinez playing so well, might force him to, you know, get back a little bit sooner and heal up a little bit faster. Um, but uh, in terms of other guys, it sounds like, you know, Armani Goodwin's going to be out for the season uh, with a knee injury. That's just brutal luck for, for, for Goodwin, um, guy who just hadn't been able to stay on the field this year, unfortunately. He had some really good moments early in the year, I thought, and uh, was, was a, a huge part of this offense, but just, had some 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 bad injury luck for a second straight year. So he had the hamstring this year. He also had the knee this year. So hopefully he can get back and and be ready for spring and maybe uh, be able to contribute next year. Um, but you know, those are probably the two biggest ones um, that we saw or that we kind of heard uh, about. Uh, Kayshawn Booty didn't play in this game. Uh, he's been battling the flu um, all week. Is what it sounds like. He got sick on Wednesday. So. Uh, they, he wanted to go, you know, this has been all likely his, his probably his last game in tiger stadium. So a bummer that he was, you know, uh, unable to play in this one, but, uh, sounds like he'll be ready to go for next week. Um, they're, they're, they're they think he'll be, uh, well, feeling well enough to play, uh, against A&M in the, in the home, uh, in the season finale, the regular season finale before, uh, they take on Georgia. So, uh, you know, it'll be good to get Kayshawn back and, you know, look, I think, you know, offensively, one of the big things that I saw today was just guys taking advantage of their opportunity. I wrote this in our observations piece was um, Noah Kane, the, the running back, obviously, was 16 or with 76 yards on 13 carries and the three touchdowns. Um, but I thought Jack Besh you know, had a, had a really nice night, three catches, 61 yards. Um, Besh had really kind of been a forgotten man, I think, in this offense. He'd been battling some injuries. Uh, hadn't really seen the field as consistently in recent weeks. And for him to have a little bit of a remember me kind of game, um, I, I thought was really important for his confidence. It was, you know, adds another layer to this offense in terms of you know, a playmaker, a guy who can go out and make tough catches and, and move the sticks. And so hopefully they find a way to work uh, Jack back into this uh, offense a little bit more consistently. Um, I thought that was a good sign. Uh, Malik Neighbors was the star, I thought, offensively outside of Jaden. Uh, he was uh, a really just extremely impressive in terms of the catches he was making, the separation he was getting off of his routes. Um, that was something we talked about last week was it was a really all-encompassing kind of failure for the offense last week in terms of the you know receivers not being able to create much separation I thought you know in these conditions you know, it was windy it was rainy uh, it was cold um, for, for them to be able to have that kind of performance I thought was was really good to see uh, and, and it should help them uh, kind of moving in uh, to next uh, to next week and, and into the Georgia game so um, with that I guess we can move over to to defense um, touch on the defense a little bit uh really liked what 
I, I saw from the defense from really the second quarter on, um, you know, they kind of got you know screwed with the, uh, the the bad field position there on the very first drive. The special teams allowed a 61 yard kickoff return. Again, special teams is just not been not very good. Not been very good for LSU all season, and that continued tonight. Um, cost them some points. And so UAB started off their first drive, I think, at LSU's 30-yard line and was able to, uh, to to score on that opening possession. Um, secondary looked a little bit off in the first couple drives. I think they were trying to – I think they thought it was going to be much more of a running game plan, uh, to be honest with you, with UAB. And they came out, I think, uh, slinging the football a little bit more than maybe LSU thought. And so uh, kind of got caught there in a little uh, for a little stretch of the game. But uh, – over the last you know eight nine drives of the game, seven punts, two turnovers on downs. Uh, I thought just a really consistent effort, um, uh, really over the final three quarters of play. Um, what what were your some of your big takeaways? I guess defensively. Um, uh, Greg Pin continued to have a, a good couple of uh, a good couple of weeks with uh, leading the team in tackles today, and um, Harold Perkins unsurprisingly had a couple of uh really big stops ali gay had a he had a pass breakup which i feel like could be his first in his career it wouldn't surprise me um actually it's probably it's most definitely not ali uh his very first game against mississippi state in 2020 when he was here he had an absolutely insane game where he had like oh yes three passes defended he had a couple stacks a couple tackles for a loss so like he had that one breakout game really for his first career game. Um, but he, but yeah, they, he, he had a really nice night. I thought tonight as well. Yeah, it was a, it was a group effort there. I don't think that there was like a shining star. There was definitely no one on a uh, Harold Perkins's level last week, no. but uh, I think it was again, a, a solid team effort. They, uh, they kind of held together. The secondary was looking a little iffy at times, but then they ended up, forcing UAB to bench their quarterback. So yeah. it, kind of, it kind of held together. And Matt House continues to show he is a, a master of adjustments. Brian Kelly gave him a shout-out after the, after the game, but uh, we've been saying it all year. Like He just knows exactly what to do to stop whatever is going well, which is something that, you know, is a foreign concept to a lot of LSU fans. Like if you think back to Bo Pelini against Mississippi state, refusing to change anything. And then now you have Matt house who knows exactly what to change on any given play to stop what is, uh, what is going. And I think I I do want to give a shout out. Like we mentioned, they've done this really well. You have these teams with a prolific running back who, you know, they want to get their ground game running and LSU just comes in and shuts them down. Uh, Dwayne McBride, who again was touted, we touted him as like a, you know, it's the same. It's literally the same exact story as Rocket Sanders last week. Uh, we touted him as this great running back, and he is. And then he comes in, plays against LSU, and has 13 carries for 34 yards, which is yeah. just extremely, extremely uncharacteristic. And even Jermaine Brown Jr. six carries, 24 yards. He's a big. He's not a big. He's not big at all. He's a uh, fast and a big threat uh, with a speed, but it was held in check outside of that uh, that that run. And get, shout out to Jerry Jenkins on special teams. He was a you know tackling machine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I, I I thought defensively the game plan was always going to revolve around uh, McBride and what you were able to do with him. He came in averaging 156 yards on the ground himself uh, per game. Um, so that just tells you what kind of uh, you know, season he's been having. He's the leading rusher in all of college football, and you lead and you hold him to, to 34 yards on on 13 carries. It was just a a really nice night again for LSU on the ground. Um, you can certainly see the momentum just continuing to build there. Um, uh, you mentioned Ali Gay. I thought Gay had a really nice. Um, Really nice sack. He broke into the backfield and had a nice, um, nice play on their quarterback in the first half and uh, cut a drive short. And so, you know, I, I thought it was just you know, defensively what you wanted to see uh, for the most part. You know, there was a couple of miscommunications early in the game and some missed tackles. But like I said, over the final three quarters, they played pretty flawlessly. I think they had uh, 
six or seven uh, three and outs uh, over the final three quarters. So um, only allowed 105 yards in the second half. Um, that that's that's a winning formula any way you slice it. And so major props to Matt House and company for uh, dialing up that game plan and, and executing it. Uh, and it was just a, a really dominant night, I think, for LSU as a whole. Coach Kelly kind of said after the game that yeah, outside of some of the special teams mistakes that they made, uh, it was probably their most complete performance of the season. Um, I, I don't think those were the exact words you used, but um, that it was it was something along those lines. And I, I tend to agree. I think LSU looked really good in this game and kind of the best version of themselves. I thought Jaden Daniels definitely looked like the best version of himself tonight. Um, and so that, it was just really important, I think, for LSU to get back on track. And uh, when you look around, I mean, college football, uh, we'll get into this here in a minute, but for LSU to have a game like that, I'm sure it was a collective sigh of relief for a lot of the fans out <laughs> there because you, all you had to do was look at what happened with Ohio State, with Michigan, uh, with Tennessee, with TCU. I mean, all these teams with Georgia even uh, went in by only 10 points. Uh, USC only went in by three points. Um, all these teams that are above or around LSU in the college football playoff standings had some some scary moments today. And I think that's um, that's something we really wanted to get into uh, more so than this game, um, just because it looks like you know LSU's continuing to inch a little bit closer to that college football playoff picture. Um you know, they, they, they are still in control of their own destiny, it looks like. And you're, you're obviously going to have to beat a and You're going to have to beat Georgia to really get into that uh, conversation. But um, just looking at some of the teams around LSU, Dylan, just uh, what are your thoughts on just kind of where this thing plays out, I guess, over the last week or two of this season? Well, I mean, the conversation is over of should LSU jump Tennessee – if, uh, you know, if they win the SEC, which honestly at this point, you know, don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. The It's not as crazy as it seemed a couple of weeks ago. You know, Georgia has had a couple of these games this year now where they have, you know, struggled, but teams haven't been able to take advantage. Um, I don't think that they, they, outside of Hinden Hooker, I don't think that they've played a quarterback thinking back in my mind that's as good as Jaden Daniels. Yeah. I'm I, trying to think. Uh, I mean, Bo Nix, but that was week one Bo Nix. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Bo Nix has, has had a really good, really, really good year. Um, they they won their game today, uh, setting up for another playoff scenario that, that LSU needs to watch, uh, Oregon versus USC in the Pac-12. Yeah. Well, it could, could come into play, I think. So... Well, yeah, I think LSU is entirely in their own d- control of their own destiny right now. Like the playoff picture is set. If you win out, you're in it 100%. I don't think that there's any question now. And yeah. uh, what's crazy to think if they, if they lose, the door opens up for Alabama to still make the playoffs, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's, there's some wild scenarios out there for sure. You can never count out Clemson getting a backdoor sneak in as well um, as their as mm-hmm. an ABC champ. Um, wouldn't wouldn't put it past the committee if, you know, LSU drops a game uh, over these final two for that to be a scenario. Um, <laughs> Man, if LSU <laughs> loses, we'll get into that next yeah. week. Yeah. If LSU loses a and I will be shocked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll certainly dive in much more into A&M mm-hmm. next week. Um but yeah, we just wanted to kind of come in and give our thoughts. I think on the on the playoff uh, picture as a whole. And look, I think there's just there's no other way to put it other than LSU wins and you're in. I mean, that they they're just kind of in that spot right now. And um, you you win, you that means you have you know, top ten wins over Alabama, over Ole Miss at the time, and then of course over Georgia. So. Um, really, yeah, and, and th- this is the kind of performance you want to have while every, everybody is, you know, every team ahead of you struggles or loses. Um, you were the highest ranked team that put their opponent, put their opponent away. And, uh, you know, there was still a stage for you to uh, let down. It can happen any week. Uh, I mean, I don't know who, how many people would have bet South Carolina doubling up on points, uh, on Tennessee, 
which is just crazy to say. Yeah. Shout out Shane Beamer. Um, another statement win for him. Yeah, uh, yeah like just saying at, that we're at this point is uh, that we're saying, oh, yeah, LSU, if they win, they're 100% in the playoff is crazy th- to think about with, with what Brian Kelly and Matt House and Mike Dinbrock and, you know, Brian Pullian. They even, you know, they've looked better. At, yeah. I mean, this was a little bit of a step down game. They and they need to stop holding on a uh, on return on punt returns, but yeah, you know, they, they've they, looked better. They, they haven't been point. as disastrous. Yeah, an extra sure. point missed today. They had the big long. Trey Finnison got an extra point. Them. Shout out to Trey Finnison, senior night. Yep, yep. They 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 started playing a little bit of the seniors there at the end of the game. Um, they had Derek Davis, uh, <laughs> the, the young the speed young safety playing running back. I mean, he uh. He had a really nice uh, senior year. His his senior year a couple of years ago as a running back. So maybe that's something they. He had a couple of re- really nice runs to. The- yeah, yeah, he looked good uh, back there. I must say, he he, you know, there might be something there. I mean, you know, he he's the he's of- the fastest. He would be the fastest player in that room without a doubt. Yeah, if he doesn't work out at safety, then he wants to make that transition. And I, I say go for it. You know, if LSU's going to be losing some of these uh, veteran backs here in the next year or two, and uh, they're, yeah, they're already down our money. Goodwin for the year. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, yeah, who knows what's going to happen with Emory? Um, you got Noah Kane p- potentially coming back another year, but yeah, you got Josh Williams in that backfield still. Does he come back next year? Um, just there's a lot of decisions to be made here, so uh, I'll be very interested to see how that works out. Um, but get, you're just getting back to the playoff for a second. I thought that you know, look, Tennessee's now out of it. Um, you, you, you're probably looking at LSU being number five heading into A&M week, uh, and then Michigan and, Ole, and Ohio State play next weekend, uh, and the loser of that game is most certainly going to drop out of the top four. I would, I mean, I would imagine they would, and you mm-hmm. know that sets up LSU if they beat A&M, and it'd be in the, the the playoff mix for the conference championship game. I think there's a scenario there where it's, if it's either Ole Miss or Michigan for LSU to slide into that number four spot ahead of the Georgia game. Uh, and then you're you're playing for your your playoff life in, in, in that game. So that's um, a really really I, interesting. Th- there was there was scenario. a point th- there was a point where uh, LSU could th- at this point today. Like th- I was thinking, like there was a point where LSU could have been in the top four this week yeah. uh, without oh, without the game. There was a bunch of like really it was a really solid week of of college football. I mean, the ending um, of that TCU Baylor game was just really just adrenaline high, <laughs> high, high intensity and adrenaline. And, uh, and terrible credit, terrible give, clock management terrible clock but, management you give credit to that special teams unit that might be the fastest time i've ever seen a, a field goal unit line up and and kick their you know game winning field goal uh, that was really impressive honestly um to see that but yeah have, it is a, an interesting weekend of uh, of clock management did you see what happened with denim springs and uh and didn or bitten in their playoff game yeah yeah that where was a, it, uh, man that was an unfortunate one for denim springs for those who didn't see it no, um, it was uh, it was bitten bitten kneeled with 0. No, 0.6 no it was denim, it, denim springs that kneeled with point six or with uh, I think just under a second left, it was a home game, home playoff game for Denham Springs. They kneeled with under with just over or under a second left, um, and it was fourth down, and they essentially let the quarter let, they let the other team get a chip shot field goal for for the playoff win, and it was uh, just insane, uh, just an insane ending to that game. Heartbreaker for for the team that loses, and it's just a a miracle for the team that wins it. So, I uh, while we're while we're talking about high school football, I'll talk because I got to see two former tiger, two future tigers take e go head to head with uh, Catholic versus um, Archbishop Rummel. It was uh, Sheldon Sampson versus Ashton Stamps, and I, I'm going to tell you right now, I think Ashton Stamps three star will get playing time next year as a special teamer. Uh, he is lightning fast uh, as a kick and punt returner and uh, is a great gunner. 
Uh, so, you know, just looking at what this team needs and how Brian Kelly mentions every week, he's like, we don't have any real gunners. I think Ash and Stamps uh, could could see playing time year one as a really legitimate uh, uh, punt returner and, and, and gunner. So that would be interesting. And then Shelton Sampson is just – a freak. <laughs> he's yeah. so good. I think I think he's going to come in and play a, a lot next year for LSU. And you mentioned Stamps. I mean, um, Stamps was a guy that I'm not sure was entirely on LSU's radar before the summer. Um, he came in and camped, I want to say, three or four different times for LSU this summer and earned his way to a scholarship from the Tigers. And um, you know, those are the kind of stories that you know, the coaches love that they, they, you know, they, they love that a guy is going to come back and, and, and compete with, you know, other high schoolers in the, in, in the area and around the country. And um, he, he's, he's, I think he's going to be a good one for LSU, a very underrated uh, member of this class. Um, so it was good to see uh, those two go at it head to head for a little while. I mean, um, I mean, Sheldon definitely got the better of, of stamps, but at some point, like, you know, there's only so much you can do with how big and uh, it, yeah, just how big and talented he is. But um, stamps made, did have some good coverage plays, but yeah, what really stuck out to me is stamps special teams. And it seemed like he takes, he took pride in it. I mean, I saw him last week with a uh, kickoff, a kickoff return touchdown against uh, John Errett and man, so fast yeah yeah and you know a lot of these high schools now are, are in their playoff time um i did see that kyle parker the lsu uh committed receiver had a really big had a really nice game uh, in his texas high school football playoff game i think he went for 226 yards and three touchdowns um and he's still considered a three-star right now on our 24-7 sports composite is, rankings. Um, well, you have to, you feel has to move up at some I point. I think he's going to be moving up very quickly. Um, he, he's he been so dominant this year in Texas football. I mean, like, that's no <laughs> I mean, joke. There's not, the yeah, there's n- not much, uh, not much, not, not much else you can ask for from him. And he moves, so it, he moves, he runs kind of like Alvin Kamara in, in that it is, it looks effortless with how fluid his movements are. Yeah. It's just so a I, natural. Natural, somebody, natural, natural runner. Somebody on our board threw out the Jamar Chase comparison, and it's very similar. Mm-hmm. You know, even watching Jamar run, he doesn't look like he runs all that fast, but he he moves, man. He he's effortless with his movement. So, uh, so some some really exciting um, players that are coming in with this freshman class uh, next year. Um, but before we get there, we get two more games, two more games of this team at least, and well, uh, no, th- three because you are going to get a bowl we'll game. Get the bowl game, we'll get the bowl game, but we're. We, we know which next two games are coming. So I think, uh, you know, with that, we'll be back next week to do a little preview of A&M and talk about some scenarios that might unwind between uh, you know, all these games that they got coming up here in the final week of the regular season. So uh, we'll certainly be back with you guys uh, sooner than later. So with that, we'll, we'll see you later.